So before we get into public comment, I just want to give some updates for kind of scheduling calendar. Um, I We have uh, Pietro Lynn uh, tentatively booked for July 15th. I think we can probably confirm that. Um, is there anyone on the on right now who knows they have a conflict on July 15th? Time? 5.30. 5.30. Yeah, I do. Who is that? And again? Yeah, that's me. Okay. Yeah, I, I, and actually, I, I, I would be able to attend the, the meeting on 21st and the one on, I believe, 4th or 2nd of August? One of the, whenever the August, 1st August meeting. <coughs> okay. Um, anyone else with a conflict or no? How long do you expect to meet? I'll just have an email. Okay. okay. Um, and we can do it too if you don't want to. What's that? Yeah, we can have like a Zoom link. Yeah, right. no, that's fine. Okay. No, I think that's what he was planning. Yeah. I, I talked to Carol Plant at the uh, Monthly Restorative Justice Center. She is going to work on a, um, I just can't work uh, she's going to work on a plan for us uh, and get back uh, with some possible options. So uh, we'll have hopefully some options for that training soon. Um, and then I just need to confirm with Nathan sometimes it works for him. This meeting is being recorded. Uh, hopefully, um, maybe one of the times in, in August. Uh, Jim, I think I'm going to need you to speak a little louder. Sorry. No, I can it's, do that. It's kind of far away. Come closer, Jim. Yes. <laughs> um, next, open it up for public comment. No members here. Anyone on the on Zoom? No. Uh, uh, the consent agenda. Do I have a motion to approve <clears throat> the consent agenda? And I think I may actually have to vote. Do I need to vote? We have four members, so no. No. That's the point, right? Four members, five. Well, then you would have to vote. Yes. Why don't I vote? Just to be okay. Does 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 the the Two vote and single vote, does that matter? Um, person get one vote and um, two votes? I haven't read our bylaws, so I don't know. So I'll just vote to make sure that we've got belt and suspenders. There's no, I think, harm in voting. Um, and I haven't done it in a while, so it'll be fun. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, do I, I have a, that uh, we approve the consent agenda? Uh, do I have a second? I have some questions. Huh? I have some questions. I, nice I have some questions. Okay. Yeah. Kristen has so some I don't questions. Know in what order? Uh, happen. Do you want to amend the order to uh, approve the consent agenda minus whatever documents you have questions on? Or can I ask questions and then they could be amended or they have to kind of go through like a formal to, amendment process? We have to like, separate, if you have like something to discuss on the consent agenda, it has to be pulled and then we have to discuss I guess it. I have a, a suggestion slash question about the posting locations and just wondering if a couple other Roxbury locations could be added. Um, so I don't know if that costs. So can we amend the motion to approve the consent agenda? Minus the posting locations, and then we just have a quick discussion. Yeah, uh, sounds great. Okay. Kristen has made that motion. Do I have a second? <laughs> I'll second it. Um, any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 The ayes aye. have it. Um, all right. Uh, yeah, I was just wondering if a couple of Roxbury locations could be added in terms of like physical locations where they're posted. It seems like um, Montpelier feels pretty well covered, but like you know, if something could be posted with the Roxbury Town Clerk um, and maybe at the Roxbury Free Library, just to get like a little more um, yeah presence in the Roxbury community, if possible. I think we can do that. Okay. I am sorry, but you know I have problems with my hearing, and it's, I'm not hearing. Sorry. You know, I, I can, so Amanda, I was also I'm muted. Oh, that's yeah. Do you want you me to unmute that. to speak? 
Uh, if you like to, I, I can. So Chris just asked if if there can be additional locations in Roxbury. Uh, she was wondering if they could post it at, with the town clerk in Roxbury and also at the Roxbury uh, town library, uh, just to have additional places where people could see it. Uh, and my understanding is that that can be done. Maybe. We have to designate posting locations, which are our schools. The other, the courtesy copies are just that. They're courtesy copies. So I think we'd need, you'd want to decide if it's a courtesy, if copy, it's a courtesy or copy or if it's official posting location. I, my, my recommendation is that we make it a courtesy copy because mm -hmm. if it's an official location and for some reason, you, don't you do know, it. we don't do it, someone forgets, yep. then we have a potentially falsely warned meeting. Right. Does that work? Yeah, I think so. Is that, I mean, is that in sync with like the, the Montpelier town city clerk is also a um, courtesy posting? A courtesy posting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. I'll tell your city clerk. Oh, yeah. 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 We could also probably change Stephen Mills to David Delcor. Yeah. Anna, do you see that? Change Stephen Mills to David Delcor? Did you have any other questions? That's it. Okay. Yep. Great. Um, do you want to approve the or the posting locations with the addition of two new courtesy postings in Roxbury? Do I make a motion? Yes. Okay. Here I go. <laughs> okay. okay. I make a motion to pass the consent agenda with the posting. So the consent agenda has been passed, so we're just passing this in. Okay, I make a motion to pass the posting locations with the additions of two locations in Roxbury, including the town clerk and the Roxbury Free Library. And with the report of the town clerk exchanged. Yes. Great. Do I have a second? I'll second it. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Um, great, ayes have it. Uh, let's move on to uh, committee updates. Um, we have policy committee update. Uh, I want to note Amanda made two good suggestions to me via email, uh, or two suggestions to me via email. One, that we delay uh, monitoring reports until uh, the policy committee uh, works with some of the policies. I'm happy to entertain that. I feel with four board members missing, that's a discussion that we should probably table for next time. Um, and then also, and this may be something we want to table for next time too, uh, just having a policy or a committee update uh, be a regular part of the agenda. So we just take 10, 15 minutes, so each policy or each committee would just give any updates for the board to consider, and that way the board wanted to dig deeper. Um, the idea is that we would not dig deeper then, but but we could set it off as an agenda item um, for later. Um, Amana, are you okay tabling those until we have a bigger crew? Yes, I would love that. All right, great. Um, and then as chair of the policy committee, do you want to give, give an update? And again, this is something we might want to redo again, just given given low attendance? Sure. Um, the policy committee met, and um, we have <clears throat> organized ourselves to do a little work uh, to tackle the work plan. And um, so we have some work that we're doing. We're meeting again uh, this week on July, well, tomorrow, on no, Friday, um, to kind of start looking at the work plan and, the, and how we're going to tackle some of the work that we have to do, which is to look at each of the policies that are expiring, 
because they have to be looked at every three years. Um, also looking at those houses that were monitored before, um, and there was just some conversations about next steps. So we will be hoping to clarify a schedule that we will build around the policies, and that's, that's what I have, and I don't know, Jim, do you want to add something else? No, I think that's a good update. I don't have anything um, further further to add. Um, any questions for Amanda? Great, thank you. Um, and Jill, do you want to give a tech center update, please? Sure. Hi, everybody. Um, yeah, so in case you um, weren't, weren't remembering, I am the Montpelier Roxbury School Board representative on a governance study committee for the Central Vermont Career Center. So currently, the Central Vermont Career Center is located in um, the Spalding High School campus in Barrie and is part of the Barrie Unified Union School District. And we are one of the sending schools that has an agreement that our students can attend the Career Center. Um, and that's in addition to Hartwood, U32, Cabot, Twinfield. Um, I'm sure I'm forgetting some folks, but several uh, sending high schools send their students to that Career Center. So this study committee is actually looking into whether it wants to become an independent tech center district to serve our region rather than being um, under the umbrella of the Barry Unified Union School District. Uh, the Governance Study Committee uh, is made up of members of the different boards. Like I said, I'm the, the member from this board. Um, it's been really neat to have the conversations with the different boards in our area about what we want for our students and what the Career Center could do. And um, the trade-off of becoming its own independent district and the sort of more direct buy-in and um, oversight and responsibility that the different sending districts would have. Um, so we're still very much in the early stages. It's being facilitated by um, a consultant, uh, Mike DeWees, some of you might know him as a longtime superintendent who I worked with for a long time at the agency I've had. Um, I do, I did just want to share quickly, I'm not sure if I have screen sharing capabilities, but maybe I can just stick in the chat. I wanted to show you folks the web page. There's a really good sort of round up, I, and I'm sorry, Anna, that I didn't send this too soon or I didn't think about yeah, it. Can um, you enable your screen There's here? a web page yeah. that has all the meeting minutes that has a really helpful presentation of sort of the history of this career center and the history of career centers in Vermont and the governance structure and how it's built the way that it is and why this is something that we're looking into. Um, and so it's a little daunting in that, you know, we're having this sort of really in-depth step by step of the bylaws that we're trying to work through of what we'd be proposing. Um, if this committee succeeds in sort of pulling together a study report, it has a long way to go. It need to get approved by the State Board of Education, the Secretary of Education, and then each of the towns and each of the sending districts. So all the voters would actually be voting on whether they would want to be part of this independent tech center district. Um, right now there's only two others in the state. Uh, we actually have one of their superintendents on our committee, so incredibly helpful about sort of the pros and cons, um, mostly pros, frankly. Um, but it hasn't happened in Vermont in about 13 years that a tech center has actually sort of become its own district. So we're working through things like the weights of the votes of the board members, the makeup of the board, the bylaws, the policy um, articles, um, the dissemination or commingling of the votes of the various districts. So, for example, um, the way that this would probably show up is that it would be a separate article on the Montpelier and Roxbury Town of Meeting Day ballot for the Centre for Vermont Career Center, in addition to and separate from the Montpelier and Roxbury School District. Um, so those are the sort of logistics we're working out. Um, like I said, it has, a, it has a long path before it would actually be put in place but it is kind of exciting to think about having a little bit more say about what's being offered to those students and sort of the long-term plan. I'm really impressed by what the Career Center has to offer for our students. There's really successful like digital media programs that they have and other things that are really linked to um, jobs that we're really looking for people to have. So it's definitely not the Career Center that um, we might have had you know, 40 years ago. Um, so let's see, oh good, thank you, I have, I have a sharing now. So I just wanted to share the, um, this is just the, the home web page. If you're interested in digging into it a little bit more, like I said, it's a study committee about the governance. So it's very much our first step. 
Um, there's a very handy sort of presentation that's kind of why we're doing this in the history of the tech center. There is a white paper report. Um, and then there's all kinds of information from our past meetings. There's a meeting minutes, there's information about the committees, upcoming agendas. We meet twice a month and I'm also on the executive committee that kind of helps set the agenda. Um, so we're gonna be continuing to work through, um, at least through the end of this year, on what our proposal to the different, uh, to the state board, the, the secretary and the different communities would even be. Um, I'm happy to take any questions or if there's anything you folks want me to look into and bring back to, I'd be happy to do that. So you can see this is actually, right now, this information can be found under the Central Vermont um, Career and Technical Center webpage, and I can share this with the board after. Is that Jill, is the idea to get this on the, but on the ballot for next budget vote or the year after? The year after because I think this it's a several month process to get it in front of the state board and the secretary. So I don't see that happening until the budget vote in early 2023. Got it. And what, what will it look like? Will it be first a vote for allowing this district to be formed? And then going forward, will there be like, how will its budget be approved? Will Montpelier be part of like this larger district and will there be like a separate budget item each town hall to approve the budget for the, the tech center? Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. And that's those are the sort of logistics that we're working out of what we would even propose. But essentially this independent district would have to get to the various boards and the districts, the, the budget um, well before J uh, January 1st so that the boards know what it's going to be. It will not be mixed with the school budget would be its own separate article and line item on the various town meeting ballots. Um, but the votes, I think the way that it seems like um, we would be proposing is the votes would be commingled. So that would mean that um, it would be the total number of votes, the majority of the total number of votes cast would approve it. So it wouldn't be that if three of the towns um, voted it down and five didn't that it wouldn't pass. It, it's based on the total number of votes from the total number of voters who voted um, in the district. So lots of big weighty things to, to weigh that um, we have a long way to go. I definitely will want to come to you guys with a lot more information probably with the new superintendent of the Career Center right now. Um, I think her name is Jody Ferguson. Um, so there's a lot of those kind of logistics. I still have a lot of questions about the financial impact and what that, if that is a zero sum impact on our, you know, sending tuition for students to go to the Career Center. Um, but it does seem like it's a pretty successful model in some of the other places um, and that the different districts would have a lot more say in what's offered and, and how to manage things like transportation and special education than we do right now. Excellent. Uh, additional questions for Jill? And uh, the participant list is a little funky for me, so go ahead and just raise your hand or ask. So just for. Jill for uh, okay, now I, now I can see your hand. Go ahead, Emily. All right. Um, so just. For a point of clarification, uh, the funding for these, so so all the districts would basically approve the, the budget and the district together, um, or the towns, uh, will fund it, right? Would there, right now, whenever a student is sent there, the district pays for that, right? So that portion would go away as they have their own budget? Right, so we wouldn't be paying a, a usage of our students that would go to the Career Center anymore. So that wouldn't be a part of the Montpelier Roxbury District budget, but there would be a separate line item for Montpelier and Roxbury voters for the Tech Center District. So it wouldn't be tied to the number of students that are going there. Um, it, it would just be, a, 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 I guess, per right. district, there would be some cost. That's right, and I'm not sure there's probably some sort of a rolling average or something like that that would be based on, because, you know, Montpelier U32 might send a lot more students than, say, Cabot, for example, um, and very certainly still makes up the majority of students going. So I think that's one of the pieces that we still have to iron out is how we apportion the budget 
based on is it enrollment of students going there? Is it total student enrollment? Is it population? Because that can vary. Yeah. Um, those are the kind of things we're trying to work out still. So I don't feel comfortable that I can try to make an attempt as to whether it would be uh, what the financial impact would be, but that's definitely what I'm trying to keep an eye on. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Great. Um, Alana, did you have a question? Oh, no, I just wanted to say thank you, Dale, for being there. Thank you. It's it's interesting. Yeah, no, thank you, Jill. This is great. Um, any other questions for Jill? Otherwise, we can move to board discussion. Libby, demographics. So Libby. there... The background is just from the last board meeting that I watched, there was, a dem there was a discussion on what the demographics of the district was, and so we have that information. So this was from last school year, the one that just finished. Um, and when we have the demographic, yeah, when we have demographics for next school year, we'll put that up, but um, we just wanted to give you the opportunity to discuss that data if you wanted to, or just have it in your hands, because it was a hot topic last time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Great. Any questions or otherwise about the, the demographic data? And obviously, this is you know just a starting point. I know we want to um, have data in general be be more of a board topic, but um, this is I think a good snapshot of at least high profile um, demographics of the district. I have just like a context question. Like you pulled this stuff for us, kind of just for our general knowing. We had this already, already put together. Right, but is it something that you guys, that like the leadership team uses that it informs, you know, things in terms of budget and where there's need and strategy yeah. and things like that? Absolutely. Yeah, okay. Is there any like specific way in which it's we look at it. Share. So, for instance, yes, back scores are coming out right now. So, we'll most definitely be disaggregating that that data by IEP, by students who speak uh, or who get English language services. For reduce, we'll definitely be correlating. Yeah. 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 yeah disaggregating that data. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have a question too about, and I don't have it right in front of me, but my my recollection was that UES had a notably higher portion of English language portion students. Of English language students and also BIPOC students than all the other schools, which I guess surprised me that I expected a maybe town difference between Montpelier and Roxbury, but maybe not an inter-school difference. No, what's interesting about UES and the younger, that is almost solely from national life. Okay. But I got the right, I always, always want to call it American life, but it's yes. national life, right? Um, they bring, uh, for some, for the last few years, they've brought a large contingent of people from, from the Indian area, from India area, yep. um, and, and they come with young children. All of them have young children. So they're, they're actually, um, I didn't give the board the break out of this, they're actually in pocketed grade levels. And I don't know if that's an intentional move by National Life or not, but, um, that's why there's such a larger proportion of yeah. UES because of the national life um, effort. Yeah, I'm yeah. not sure what it's related to there, what the roles are there, but it's it's big. In fact, we raised, we increased. Jim, if you remember, we increased the English language teachers. What was that? Two years ago, because yes. of that, mm -hmm. we increased the FTE there at UES because of that um, influx, which was relatively new. So I have, a, I have a data related question. Um, are these the categories, are they mutually exclusive? Uh, so could a kid be in multiple categories? Is that what you're asking me, Annika? Wouldn't he be? Or he or yeah. she, are they? Yeah, they could be in multiple categories, yes. Okay. So the percentage, I'm confused about the, so they're, Right. Oh, that's why they're over 100% because it's, it's the percentage of total kids. Yeah. Okay. Thank you.
Any other questions or comments? I had a Roxbury just specific yeah. question. Like, just curious about um, <clears throat> once RVS kids hit like the Montpelier schools, do you kind of look at them over time? Sort of what happens when they sort of arrive in a new community and classrooms that have like a larger ratio of student to teacher and kind of just see how they land. Oops, sorry. I'm talking with my hands too much. Now that we're in person, there's that risk. Um, but yeah, like once they kind of hit this community of schools and it's a new community, it's a different community, you know, I mean, ostensibly like there's shared curriculum and there's some continuity there, but it's a really different setting for them. Yeah. I'm just curious what that transition looks like and if it's tracked in any way. We don't track it mm -hmm. purposely, no. Mm -hmm. We probably should have mm -hmm. when we first merged. Um, so like and we, yeah, and mm -hmm. we just weren't thinking in that way mm -hmm. when we first merged. But looking back on that first year of the merger, we most definitely made some errors there. Mm -hmm. um, but we don't right now track in any way, shape, or form mm -hmm. um, for kids who are from Roxbury. It's mm -hmm. really the only way they're noticeable. A kid from Roxbury is noticeable is that they get on a bus. Right. You know, like they ride the Roxbury bus. Right. Um, but other than that, it's pretty much they're in with the flow. Yep. Yeah. But you're right, it's a large change. Yeah. It's yeah. a large change. Yeah. So I guess anything that's known as sort of anecdotal, but right. not necessarily. Yeah, it's yeah, not it's intentional. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, other questions or comments? Um, so policy monitoring, we have two uh, policies up for report, um, tobacco prohibition EO8 and then uh, AO2 board superintendent relationship policy. Um, let's start with tobacco prohibition. Do you have a motion to approve that? I move that we approve the policy monitoring report or policy, sorry, which one is that? Um, EO8. EO8. E08. 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 Yep. Thank you. Uh, do you have a second? I'll second. Um, second from Kristen. Uh, any discussion? And I have a question um, regarding um, the um, the data around like what happens when someone is found that I was looking at, at the policy at the at the procedure I guess is what I meant um, so is so it, in, there's a point where there's a police call if someone is found. Is this, is this if there's an illegal substance, then the police are called. Sorry, maybe I can't hear you. I'm sorry. If there's an illegal substance, then typically the police are called. Okay. Um, okay, and, and is that detailing the procedure? I don't have it up right now. I'm not sure. It's in the handbooks for the high school and the middle school. And is that in the tobacco prohibition or is that in the drug and alcohol? It might be in drug and alcohol. I don't remember. Let me let me see. And is it illegal in general or illegal for the person in possession? Illegal in general. Okay.
Yeah, the, the referral to law enforcement, that decision, if it's appropriate, is usually defined by if it's an illegal substance or not. Okay. Are there any tobacco products that are an illegal substance? Or is it perhaps paraphernalia associated? Well, paraphernalia well mar illegal. marijuana used, used to be. It's, it's not tobacco. Marijuana's included in this process. Oh, it's included in the tobacco? Yeah. In this piece. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's the drug policy I'm thinking of. I would think marijuana would be the drug policy. You're right. Yeah. That's interesting. <laughs> is that just... It could be just, just they over so, something else. So in the evidence, the two students that were found in possession of the illegal substance, with, was this uh, reported to... Was this a referral to the police in this in this report? Not this year, no. Okay. So, okay. So the this monitoring report, these two students that were in the monitoring report that were found in possession of illegal substance were not referred to the police. No. And but the procedure says that you would refer them to the police. It says if appropriate. Okay. Okay. Thank you. That's all I have. Um, any other uh, questions or comments on on the tobacco policy? Uh, all those in favor of accepting the uh, tobacco prohibition policy monitoring report um, say aye. 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 I'm going to vote two. Aye. aye. Any opposed? Um, tobacco prohibition uh, is approved. Um, I know there were some questions about the board superintendent relationship policy. Um, and I also know that we are short four members. Do we want to table that um, and have the ability for discussion around that, or do we want to move ahead with uh, approval or denial? Uh, yeah, I, I would say we want to uh, table that and, and pick it up next time because, yeah, there were some questions surrounding it we have better almost have the strength thanks Anika. do does anyone feel otherwise i feel I, I feel like it's appropriate to push it to the next meeting i'm curious if there was questions posed could those questions be shared with the board at large so we could kind of just get some perspective and what folks are thinking or do you just have to table it and um entirely maybe have some perspective i know that there were a couple instances reported about board member email communication um i think some of the relevant board members are not here mm -hmm. so i don't know if we might want to wait for them to be here before okay. we dive in mm -hmm. does that make sense I, I think that's all we have on the agenda. I did want to, uh, people, uh, we, we've started including the draft agenda for 721. Um, before we close out, does anyone have any comments on that for the next meeting? Um, or any other agenda related comments? Jim, this is Jill. I'm sorry if I misunderstood earlier. When you were asking about this, the 15th, our, our next two board meetings, the 15th and the 21st, is that what you're saying? No, our, our, we have a board meeting the 21st and we have a hour long training with Pietro Lynn on oh. roles and responsibilities. He's the district uh, attorney on the 15th from 5.30 to 6.30, which would be by Zoom. By Zoom. Okay, and then is there a board meeting the week before that? 
there is not a board meeting the week before that. We this okay. we we are having this board meeting in lieu of what would be a board meeting during the week of the fourth, which we just assumed would have low attendance. Okay, um, and, that makes sense. Yeah. So, uh, our next official board meeting is the twenty-first uh, in Roxbury. Great. And I'll be there. Probably be in person for everybody. Yeah, and people should probably, especially given that we have much better tech setup and had some stumbles here, if make it in person if you can. Um, and we have also, uh, I don't know how people, people, comfortable people are in a, in a car yet, but um, we've definitely carpooled out there previously, um, or at least had a few people. So if, if people are interested in carpools, that is, Something you can coordinate via email without um, offending the open meeting laws. Oh, oh wait, I'm sorry, Jan. I, I thought so. The July fifteenth, it's from five thirty to six thirty. Yeah, it's a Zoom training. It's a training. And then just at the regular time on July twenty first is the next board meeting, and that is in person and in Roxbury at at Roxbury Village School. Um, Another reason to attend in person is it would be great. We're all going to talk about it at school, and I think, with the exception of the Roxbury members and Andrew and I, I'm not. If the folks been out there. It'd be it's a it's a good good opportunity to we can you know take five minutes at either end of the meeting and, and give a tour <laughs> <laughs> or ten minutes. <laughs> Jill and Anakin, have you been to Roxbury? We have not, and I'm bummed out that I'm going to miss that. Oh, that's right. It's very darling. It only yes. takes 10 minutes. <laughs> Don't you worry, Annika. You'll get a shot. <laughs> Actually, on that note, um, at our facilities meeting, not to jump out of order, but we, we um, Andrew LaRosa, the facilities director, is planning on um, hosting some tours of the different buildings with us in conjunction with board meeting. So we'll have, we'll have another chance. Excellent. Thanks. Um, Great, uh, uh, that's all we have. Uh, do you have a motion to adjourn? So move. Do you have a second? I second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thanks everyone, we will uh, see you on the 15th and have a, a nice fourth.